Yellowstone supervolcano newest thermal area, an up-close look, and what was found just north of the caldera. It's something that we were recently told, a surprise to the U.S. Geological Survey. This is in, uh, on the Caldera Chronicles, August 26th. The Chronicles are a weekly article written by the U.S. Geological Survey, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists. This week's contribution is from R. Greg Vaughn, research scientist with the U.S. Geological Survey, Jefferson Hungerford, park geologist at the Yellowstone Center for Research Resources in Yellowstone National Park, and Michael Poland. He's a geophysicist with USGS. He's also the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. We all know his name. He was the one that was so adamant. He did not want NASA in any way touching Yellowstone, trying to mitigate its future super eruption. Now, earlier this year, an issue of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles reported on the discovery of a new emerging thermal area within the Yellowstone National Park. The area was identified in thermal infrared satellite imagery as a region of warm ground that was not in the park's database of known thermal features. It's located along the northeast boundary of the Sour Creek Dome near West Turn Lake, and it appears to be an extension of the previously known Turn Lake thermal area. A review of the archived aerial photos taken by the Department of Agriculture revealed that the thermal area was a hillside of healthy trees in the 1990s. We do not know its exact birthday, but satellite images acquired in the summer of 2001 show the first evidence of trees beginning to die. By 2006, there was an increasingly large zone of dead or dying trees and a measurable thermal anomaly at the surface. So obviously the heat was causing the trees to die. By 2009, the ground had the white chalky color that's typical of many other thermal areas in the park. We see that, of course, around the areas of the geysers. Sometimes we believe it's actually snow, whereas it's not. It's the minerals that come out with the steaming water, which cause the white chalky color around the, the uh, relative geysers. To better understand the characteristics of the new thermal area, a team of USGS and Yellowstone National Park scientists visited this site last week. We know that the field trip started in May, but even then they had over four feet of snow in most parts of the park. So uh, they had to wait for a lot of these snowed over areas to melt. In May is when they go on their field trips. They also checked that the monitoring stations are in proper working order. And they also, of course, went to map out this new thermal area, and we have been waiting eagerly for this report. What did they find? They mapped the extent of the area, acquired air and ground-based thermal infrared and visible imagery, and took the temperature of the subsurface using handheld thermistors. There was no water discharging from the new thermal area, but there was a, an arch-shaped core of warm ground, 20 to 70 degrees Celsius at the surface, that was covered in fallen trees. This zone was surrounded by cooler ground that was also littered with recently fallen trees. Within the warmest area, there were steam emissions from several points, steam was coming out of the ground, and sulfur crystals lined some of the steaming areas. Sulfur crystals. The ground temperature in these fumaroles, these new fumaroles in these new thermal areas, was 92 degrees centigrade. That's 198 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost boiling. The ground temperature was almost at a boiling point. 
The boiling temperature at that elevation, about 8,000 feet or 2,500 meters. Throughout this zone, just 5 to 10 centimeters below the surface, the temperatures were consistently boiling. Boiling temperatures. The ground was so warm that parts of some fallen trees have actually become charcoal. Okay? That's how hot it was. Boiling. Boiling. Trees have become charcoal. In other words, they were burned up. The sides of the fallen trees against the warm ground are baked and blackened, while the sides facing the sky are unburned. Okay, so that goes to show you what the warmth is, the, the uh, difference of temperature on the ground. The sides facing the sky were unburned. In the cooler zone, some parts of the ground were at background temperatures. Amazingly, in a few places, ground temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit were just a few feet away from the temperatures of boiling. That's 198 degrees Fahrenheit, 92 Celsius at this height, which is boiling point. The fallen trees in these cooler regions were unburned, and new trees were growing. These observations may raise many questions about the formation and evolution of the thermal area. Was a slug of gas released over a broad area first followed by more localized ground heating? Or did surface warming accompany gas discharge? discharge? And what killed the trees, the gases or the heat, or both? And why is the vegetation in some areas already recovering? One hypothesis is that over time, high temperatures were localized around pre-existing weak zones underground. For example, along existing cracks or other geological structures. This progression is the reason that we see a broad area of tree kill now, but boiling temperatures only in the core of the new thermal area. Boiling temperatures. While in this region of the park, the research team also took the opportunity to visit other thermal areas that have long been known but are seldom visited due to their remote loca locations. Mud pots, hot spring pools, and boiling fumaroles characterizing these thermal areas, but there were also zones that have clearly cooled down over time. These areas contain the telltale white hydrothermal mineral deposits but no longer have elevated temperatures, gases or hot springs, and young trees are growing again. Now this is the new image of what we have given to us in these chronicles. On the left we have the aerial view of the new extension of the Turn Lake thermal area looking southwest. Note the steam in the central part of the image. If you look closely, there's steam coming out. And on the right, we have the FLIR, forward-looking infrared, the image of the thermal area, the same image of this exact area, with a field of view indicated by the red box in the visible area. Warmest areas are bright, white, or yellow. You can see them in the middle here. While cooler areas are purple. Research conducted under National Park Service Geology Programs Milestone Permit 2016 to 2009. Now this dynamic is the name of the game in Yellowstone, especially when it comes to thermal features, which can change rapidly. Sometimes they heat up, like the Norris Geyser Basin did in 2003, and at other times they cool down, which is evident from the countless dead thermal areas. Places of altered whitish ground, but without elevated temperatures or discharge of gas or water. The appearance of the new feature near West Turn Lake is not an indication of heightened volcanic activity, but rather is part of the life cycle of Yellowstone's dynamic hydrothermal systems. We have been lucky to witness the birth of a brand new thermal area. This is it. 
and to have been able to visit it and collect data and observations early in its life. So we have to stay tuned to future issues of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles to stay up to date as the data collected last week are further now analyzed and new observations are made. So we'll have more on this in future Caldera Chronicles. And this is a new thermal feature and we'll see how this develops in the near future. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.